I am Dr. G. Manoharan. I am a plastic and reconstructive surgeon and my speciality in plastic and reconstructive subspeciality is lymphology. What is lymphology is about lymphedema and lymphatic diseases. So it is a study about lymphedema and lymphatic related diseases. Lymph lymphatics and lymph node. These are the three topics which are covered in the field of lymphology. Lymphedema is a very common problem which is there all over the world and it is more common in India basically because we have a disease called lymphatic filariasis. Filariasis gives around 80 million people affected with this with this disease this lymphatic filariasis is common in 80 countries and most of the countries are trying to eliminate lymphatic filariasis we are also doing our best but only very few countries are able to eliminate lymphatic filariasis we are still having this problem of lymphatic filariasis which is the commonest cause of lymphedema in India. What is lymphedema? Lymphedema is nothing but abnormal collection of tissue fluid in the tissue spaces. This can happen in upper limb or lower limb or any part of the body. Most common is the lower limb lymphedema. The commonest uh, cause of lymphedema as I said in the world is lymphatic filariasis. The next commonest cause is the post cancer. It can be a uterine cancer, it can be a prostatic malignancy or it can be a cancer breast. All these things post treatment post-cancer treatment lymphedema is quite common around 30 percent of the people affected with malignancies undergoing surgery and other types of treatment like radiotherapy chemotherapy all these people will develop lymphedema in the lower limb or upper limb depending upon the type of cancer they are affected with the third commonest cause is the post-traumatic or post-surgical lymphedema. Fourth is the associated with infection like in patients with diabetes, hypothyroid and other elderly people with other problems like even hypertension. Some of the drugs can cause lymphedema. And the least common is the congenital type of lymphedema where people affected by the deformity of the lymphatic system by birth. So any of these things can affect this. But unfortunately, though this is a common problem, not much interest among our own colleagues, that is our healthcare people the medical professions, the surgeons, not much has come off all these years. Very recently, the last 10 years, there have been an extensive input into this treatment of lymphedema. Before coming to treatment, let us first see how this disease is identified or diagnosed. Initially, people must have swelling in the upper limb or lower limb or as I said in any part of the body without any pain or without much discomfort. If it is there, initially the swelling may appear and disappear by itself by elevation of the affected portion. This is clinically grade 1. This will be a soft collection of fluid and then it spontaneously regresses. Then subsequently it becomes persistent 
uh, edema comes, the fluid accumulates and it stays there, it does not disappear. But still it can be soft and this is clinical stage 2. And when this is allowed to continue without treatment, this leads to the stage 3 lymphedema where there is swelling, where there is collection of fluid, where there is firmness. Instead of pitting edema, this becomes non-pitting. So, this becomes fibrous non-pitting uniform lymphedema. Then the fourth grade is fibrous non-pitting, but the contour of the limb is destroyed or the contour of the limb changes or there are ulcers, secondary infections and nodular growth. So, these kind of complications. So, all this leads to the further development of this lymphedema. So, once clinically when it comes and then disappears, we have to diagnose what it is due to. There are certain medical conditions where this can come and can be treated by medically like in a congestive cardiac failure, renal failure, hepatic or liver failure in these conditions. So, these conditions can be made alright with the physicians by giving proper medications and treatment. When it comes and stays there and it does not disappear, at that stage if you investigate the, apart from the clinical examination and staging of the disease, there should be a circumferential fixed point circumferential measurements and then volumetric study to see the increase of volume when compared to the normal limb. Apart from this, these days of evidence based medicine, we have to do a test called lymphocentigraphy. The lymphocentigraphy is the gold standard investigation for lymphedema these days. Apart from lymphocentigram, there is a MRI lymphangiogram or lymphangiogram, IgG lymphangiogram, all these things can be done. But most commonest these days is the lymphocentigram, which is done by a injecting a very small amount 0.05 ml of a nucleotide tagged technetium 99 tagged human serum albumin, serum nanocolloid, antimony sulfide, dextrone, sulfur colloid, etc. These are some of the drugs used in lymphocentigram. This is injected in the first web space in the lower limb and second web space in the upper limb and this can be traced through a gamma camera which is called a nuclear scan. This nuclear scan will give you the type of cause for the lymphedema which you are dealing with. This can show you the grades, various stages of lymphedema and this will tell you what are the types of options available for these patients. After seeing lymphocentigram, we can diagnose the disease from which you got the lymphedema. We can find out what is the stage of the disease. We can find out what are the options, surgical options or medical options available. As far as the lymphatic filariasis is concerned, stage 1 and stage 2 lymphedema, if we are able to find out in early stages, is totally reversible by chemotherapy, medical management and MLD and bandaging, manual lymph drainage and bandaging <coughs> which can be done as an outpatient procedure along with the drugs for uh, the antifilarial treatment and periodic cyclical chemotherapy plus antibiotic. Usually people used to give penicillin, lang acting penicillin as a initial drug of choice. But if the patient is allergic to penicillin, then doxycycline or ofloxacilline can be given as a treatment of choice for 5 to 7 days. 
which can be combined with DEC that is diethyl carbamazine 100 mg 3 times daily for 5 to 7 days. It can be combined with albendazole uh, up to 400 mg per day depending upon the age of the patients and subsequently it can be repeated once a month at least for one year and then later on once a year for six years which is called the mass drug administration regime by the WHO. So if it, the stage is beyond grade two then we have to do a procedure called manual lymph drainage or a CDT complete decongestive therapy which is a therapy given by the lymphedema therapist who knows the anatomy of the lymph nodes and lymphatic system in the body. They will do this procedure for any time between 6 to 10 days depending upon the severity of the lymphedema. And after doing this procedure, you can soften the lymph edema and the swelling. It reduces in size and the circumference comes down, the volume comes down and it, the tissue becomes soft. Once all these things are achieved, then we can do a drainage procedure which is otherwise known as a physiological operation. The commonest operation we do in lymphatic filariasis is the lymph nodo venal anastomosis at the inguinal le level if it is for the lower limb, at the ax axillary level if it is the upper limb. For other post cancer or post surgical other types of lymphedema, we still have to do a drainage procedure. Usually we can do a vascularized lymph node transfer or a lymphoticovenous anastomosis at multiple sites and subsequently if necessary you have to follow it with the pressure garment and the periodic antibiotic. Nowadays the commonest antibiotic used in all type of lymphedema is doxycycline 100 mg twice daily for 5 to 7 days every month for one year and wearing a compression garment, keeping the leg or the upper limb elevated while at rest and hygiene, foot hygiene and the upper limb hygiene is very important and you see that patient does not get injured in the affected lymph and you prevent the secondary infection, skin infection or a fungal infection, intertrigo or if the patient has got a caries teeth, this has to be managed. With all these things, now we are able to get a very good results. We have designed our own technique of surgery as well as the protocol. So we do the manual lymph drainage or CDT for 6 to 10 days, which will be followed by a reduction surgery if necessary, which is superficial to the deep fascia and no skin grafting or a flap cover is given at any point of time. No need of a blood transfusion if it is done under a tourniquet control. We have never given a blood transfusion in these patients. And subsequently at the end of all these procedures, once you reshape the limb, whether it is upper limb or lower limb, then you do a drainage procedure. We usually do a lymph nodo venal anastomosis which will be followed by uh, patient hygiene and then avoiding secondary infection, periodic antibiotic and anti filarial cyclical therapy with the pressure garment and self auto massage. So these are the things which we recommend in filarial lymphedema but the same thing can be followed in other type of lymphedema except the anti filarial drugs. Other, other than that, it is the same type of management is needed in other types of lymphedema as well. Why we are talking about lymphedema is, as I said, the awareness we should create among the people that it is a treatable disease, it is a preventable disease. So whatever the type of thing, we should try to prevent as we always say prevention is better than cure. So lymphatic filariasis which is a mosquito transmitted parasitic disease 
can be prevented. Same thing in a post cancer, we by taking adequate steps, the lymphedema can be prevented. So it is a preventable disease. Okay, it has come already. So if you come to the correct person, you get it treated as early as possible, then in lymphatic filariasis, it is a totally reversible uh, disease in stage 1 and stage 2. In later stage also, we can give a comfortable lifestyle for the patient and his work or his job will not be get affected so that his uh, yearning capacity will be continue to have the same thing and sometimes the say one person may be the breadwinner of the family if he is affected by the disease it is a socio and economical burden as well so all these things can be prevented if the doctors as well as the patients are aware of the lymphedema and the various types of diagnostic and management available for this disease Music